live. You gotta put that work in, man. You gotta go get Learn. It. See, listen. This is what I tell them. Serve. I've been grinding for so long. I wake up and chase my goals. Inspire. You're in the right place. You checking out? Chip Baker, the success card. Conquer all my goals, then I'm living out my dream. Dig deep, go out and get it. Success Chronicles. Compete until it's finished. Success Chronicles. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chip Baker coming to you with another episode of the Success Chronicles. And today we have Mr. Justin Sewell with us, and he is a mental performance and leadership coach um, doing some amazing things. Um, you know, if you don't know about him, you need to follow him because he, he's pushing a lot of positive and doing some great stuff. You know, I, I follow him as well, and I find myself commenting on this post with uh, – it's so good. I just hit you with short sentences. I can't say anything else. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I love him. I love him. <laughs> or amen. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so that's, that's all I can get out because it's so good. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> well, tell us, tell us about yourself, man. Um, you know, where you're from and, and all of that stuff. Up yeah, there. yeah. Yeah, born and raised in Los Angeles, California. The actual city is Torrance, California. Uh, my father is actually born and raised in another country, the country of Samoa, Polynesian island. The most famous Samoan from there is a uh, Samoan is probably known as Dwayne the Rock Johnson. So yeah. his mom is Samoan, and um, and he is. So that's whenever people are like, "Hey, who else is Samoan?" He's that's somebody everybody knows. Uh, so uh, so my father, born and raised there, came to America when he was a te- when he was a teenager. A young boy, my mom, born and raised in California, and two loving parents, two loving siblings. Um, my passion was baseball. Wanted to be a great baseball player. Ended up uh, going to BYU playing baseball. And what was interesting is I always I, it was get to the pros, get to the pros, get to the pros. Like a lot of people who were playing college sports. And um, in my freshman year, I was a freshman All American pitcher. And then I stopped playing baseball to go serve a two year church mission. And so for two years, I lived in Nicaragua, I learned the language of Spanish, and I put, the base, put baseball down. And I'll never forget a scout, a professional scout told me this is going to be the, the worst thing you can do for your career, to stop playing baseball, to go teach people about Jesus. Like, what are you thinking? What are you doing? And it was exactly what I needed to do. So I put everything on hold, went and I did it, came back to play baseball, and literally my career just just went down the drain from there. I just overcoming injuries. I just wasn't the same mentally. And I got a degree in broadcast journalism. So I wanted to be a sports broadcaster. I got married while I was in college, got married young. Mm-hmm. Oh, so when I got back, I was what, 22, 23 years old, got married young, went to be a sports broadcaster and in, in back in Los Angeles. And I didn't like it. It, it just, it, I didn't feel like I, I wanted to report on athletes. And so I went into teaching high school students. So I was a high school teacher for a little bit, but I felt like I was just kind of going through the motions. I felt there was something else out there that, that really that the Lord wanted me to do, a calling that was out there, but I didn't know what it was. Mm-hmm. So I, was, I thought, you know what, let me go back and get some more education. Now at this point, uh, we had two more kids, and so, or now we have three kids. So I have my wife, three kids, I'm in my late 20s, and um, teaching high school. Next thing you know, I see this master's degree excuse me, master's degree in sports psychology. Now, I didn't know what that was. I'm like, sports psychology, what is this? The more I looked into it, I realized it's teaching people how to be more motivated, teaching people how to be confident, teaching people the mental side of life, how to be their best selves. Yeah. And there was a degree to it. I thought, you can get a degree in this, like a master's degree and a doctorate degree. And so I went and got my master's in it. I ended up deciding to just let teaching go and go to be an entrepreneur. And from that moment on, it was the scariest, most 
amazing decision that my wife and I ever made. And while she's at home taking care of the kids, I decided to just jump with no biweekly check, with no savings. It was crazy. Uh, went to become an entrepreneur, trying to open up my own business. When you know it, one thing led to another. Signed a contract with the dancer, Dancing with the Stars. Signed a contract with the U.S. Army. Then a place called the IMG Academy. Then the bo- wrote a couple of books. Then the Boston Red Sox called. Then the Cleveland Browns called. And so it just became such an amazing blessing that so many things came as I took a huge leap of faith. But just try to be consistent. Try to provide the world with some some value and it has come back tenfold. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, I'm a true believer in if you're doing things from the right place, you know, like you said, you know, with God in mind, you know, and from the heart, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, if, if you're doing, if you're doing things from, from that light, right. Like whatever happens, it's going to be a bright light. Right. And for me, that was what really was most authentic to me and, and still is of just, being a man of faith, so just following yeah. my heart and following what the Lord wants me to do. And, uh, and it's, it's just been an absolute incredible journey since then. Well, what are, what are three things that you've accomplished in your life that you're proud of? Well, I'd say that I'd say I'd go in, I'll go in chronological order, not necessarily in order of importance in mm-hmm. chronological order. Uh, number one is as a 19 year old to be an all American baseball player, freshman, all American baseball player touted as someone with tremendous future upside to drop everything, to go to a third world country away from family, don't talk to family, spoke to them two times a year, uh, no TV, no radio, no schooling, just dropped everything to, to serve. It was for two years and, and to learn the language of Spanish, to, to, to sleep, to have dirt floors and bats sleeping over us and to have no running water for weeks at a time. Um, that was one of the greatest, most amazing accomplishments that I – and to pay for it. I didn't get paid to do it. I had to pay money to go do this. And it was absolutely incredible. So that was, that was the one. And I can say everything that I've accomplished since then, that taught me so much. Um, the set, then after that, getting married, I think, was just, uh, just an unbelievable thing. And, and being, having been married for almost 14 years now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and number three is, is, is having three children. I know it is special to have children. A lot of – people, friends of mine can't have children or, or, or it's, it's difficult. And I, I don't take it for granted. Um, but those are the three aside from the books, aside from working with elite athletes, aside from all the professional accolades, which is they're, they're, it's neat. A million viewers on, on a million downloads on my podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, those things don't hold a candle to those other three things I just mentioned. Okay. Uh, What's your definition of success? For me, I like to go in, along the line of it, it, it has changed and evolved over the years mm-hmm. as I watch elite performers and I kind of compare myself, my own journey. I fall in line with John Wooden. John Wooden basically saying the definition of success, and I'm going to butcher it, but essentially the principle is knowing that you gave your absolute best because that's all you can control. When I lay my head down at night knowing that I gave my absolute best and I was consistent with it day after day. That is my definition of success. And obviously, I'm in, a, I'm in a business where results matter. I think just generally speaking, results do matter. But I, I'm a firm believer that as you train well and practice well and, and have a good attitude and focus on your effort level and are great teammates day in and day out and, and try to get 1% better every day, get, in other words, giving your best every day, mm-hmm. that success and the byproduct are the result the results will take care of themselves and so in just in a tweetable statement success to me is is giving your best every single day well there it is thank you so much for taking the time to interview with the success chronicles Uh, and thank you guys for watching this episode we'll see you next time god bless Get it.